morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath to you. Happy Sabbath to those worshiping online as well. We welcome you to the house of the Lord and to the worship service of the Monique Seventh-day Adventist Church. Today being February 3, 2024, the Adventist Community Services Department will be carrying out the services under the Sabbath school. Our theme or topic for today is a recipe for the successful Christian life. Now, we do know that for any cooking that you should undertake, a recipe is important. Why is a recipe important? Hmm? I just hear mumbling. I need something clear. All right, so... If we want the product to be perfect, having the right consistency and so on, the right taste, we ought to follow the recipe. True? Right? Sometimes we tend to divert. We might add a little bit more or less. And do you think the product will be the same at the end? No. So the successful for the, sorry, the recipe for the successful Christian life, what do you think? would be the perfect recipe. Following Christ. All right. So, how are you feeling today, though? Feeling good? Feeling blessed and highly favored? Yes. Um, how are you following your recipe? Are you following your recipe well? Yes. All right. So one of the recipes is actually found in Exodus 20, verse 8, going down to 11, and a whole lot, right? And one specific, what, what, what is it uh, so important about today? Sabbath, so that is one of the recipes. Yes? And there's a whole host of them right there um, contained in Exodus 20. How are we doing with following the recipe? And does the, does the product look like it's coming up? So today we are going to be looking at that, looking at adherence to the recipe that we've gotten and how well we have been managing, how the outcome is looking so far. All right? So we know when you're baking or you're cooking, we must follow the recipe, and so it is with our Christian lives. Most of us may not see the importance of using a written recipe. Just as many of us women in the kitchen are men, we have become so proficient at cooking that we no longer measure we just throw in some salt and we throw in that and we say, yeah, man, it will taste good. Not true. Yes, because we become proficient. But you find that sometimes the cooking, or most of the times, it is not tasting the way it should all the time. Because your cooking is not standardized. True? Yes. So for the cooking to be standardized, your measurement must be consistent throughout. Amen? And it's going to be the same thing with our Christian lives. We're up today and tomorrow we're down, we can't bother and we, we give half and, and so on. So it's it usually not going to work out for us in that way. All right, so we must see the importance of following the written recipe in our kitchen just as it is with our Christian lives. Amen? So we have to follow the set of instructions. Recipes are essential for continuity. So if you want your children to know, over in Deuteronomy, it says what? They are to wear it as what? Frontlets, I hear somebody say. Not true. And in your going out, in your coming in, in your rising up, and in your sitting down. Every part, it must be practiced. Proverbs 8.33 says, Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Proverbs 12.15 the way of the fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is what? Is wise. He that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. So we are going to be looking at hymn number 538. I'm going to invite you to stand and sing. Five hundred thirty-eight, and after this, we are going to be having group prayers. We have four groups, 
and we take a prayer from each group, four groups. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. So we have been looking at the recipe for a successful Christian life, and we have been comparing it with how we, you know, 
just our daily life, looking at how we operate. We may be cooking or baking. So today, we will be demonstrating the importance of the recipe for the successful Christian lives. Today, we have two teams of bakers, and they will be demonstrating in that regard. Our announcer, who is going to be overseeing the process of the baking, Mrs. Audrey Carter, will be coming to introduce and to give you a synopsis of what the demos will consist of. Welcome to the Bake Off contestants. As both teams are fully aware, you are live on the biggest live show on the Food Network. We are honored to have the presence of our five-star chef, who has over 33 years of experience baking bread in Israel's finest restaurants and bakeries. The prize for the best bread will include an all-expense-paid trip to the world's top restaurant. The rules are simple. Each team is required to follow the instructions given to win. The best baker will be judged and determined by the judge, and his decision is final. Let us begin. I will now give you both the recipe for a loaf of bread. Do your best. Okay, this recipe seems simple enough to follow. It's not exactly the way I'm accustomed to baking bread, but I trust the expertise of the chef who gave it to me. The recipe calls for one package of active dry yeast, two and a quarter cups warm water, and that should be anywhere between 110 degrees to 115 degrees Celsius. Three tablespoons of sugar. And then another half teaspoon of sugar. One tablespoon salt. Two, tablespoons, two tablespoons canola oil. And then six and a quarter to six and three quarter cups of bread flour. It seems simple enough. Let us begin. Hey team, please read the recipe for me, please. We need, we need yeast, salt, oil, flour, sugar, and water. Okay, that's all? Yes, that's all that is required. That's all that is required. Okay, let's show them a little creativity. We'll improve on that recipe a bit. We will add pumpkin to enhance the flavor, some sesame seed sprinkled on top, garlic for a more palatable Garlic for a flavorful experience that will appeal judges' taste. Let us add some milk. It will even be more palatable. That also breaks down the enzymes and allows it to cook faster. The judge is well-traveled and must appreciate these unique culinary additions. Okay, boss. I agree. Let us improve on the recipe. Lastly, although the master chef asks us to bake a loaf of bread, 
Let us make smaller sizes. We'll make little buns so we will have more in case other persons in the congregation want to taste the bread. So let's begin mixing. May I invite us all to stand with our Bibles and turn to Proverbs 3 and we'll read from verse 5 through to 10. Proverbs chapter 3, reading from verse 5 through to 10. Please listen while I read. It says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel, and morrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Amen. Please be seated. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up, and make me Like the woman at the well I was seeking For things that could not satisfy And then I heard my father speaking Draw from my well that never shall run dry oh fill my cup lord i lift it up lord come and quench this thirsting of my soul bread of heaven feed me till i want no more fill my cup fill it up and make me whole there are millions in this world who are craving the pleasures earthly things afford but none can match the wondrous treasure that I find in Jesus Christ my Lord. Oh, fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Brother, if the things this world gave you 
leave hungers that won't pass away. My blessed Lord will come and save you if you kneel to him and humbly pray. Oh, fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. make me whole oh fill my cup fill it up and make me whole I am back inside the kitchen let me check with the teams to see how they are doing with the bacon. Chef Juan, how are you doing in the kitchen? Well, I am following the recipe precisely. And I'd like to say that even though it's not the way I'd usually do it, I would usually bake it, but I am trusting the creator of the recipe. It is essential to trust the process. We have had a few bumps in the road, but the dough is coming out great. It looks good. And we are about to put the loaf in the oven. Okay, let me check in with the other team who seem to have had it in their ingredients list. Chef Tu, how are you doing in the kitchen? I, I made some improvements in the recipe and it's going to be great. We decided to feed more people and to create an over better bread that will blow the judge's mind. We added and improved and made changes. This chef plans to improve on our expert chef's recipe with a few tricks in his own. Let me, let's see how these improvements impact the outcome. So we await the results of the bread. The chefs have placed the dough in the oven. And while we wait, we will be going into our lesson review. So, um, where this is, the proof is in the eating. We will see what happens when the doughs come out of the oven. At this moment, our elders, Carter and Llewellyn, we will be doing our lesson review. Uh, before that, we're going to ask our teachers to mark the blanks and take the records, and after which, elders Carter and Llewellyn will begin.
Good morning, Elder. Good morning, Elder. Thank God we have another chance of sitting with our people yeah. and waiting for the bread to bake. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so we just got to go go through go through this study as um as we wait on them. Elder Moody, it is good to see you here with us it is so this good. morning. And, and it is Sister a pleasure Moody. having you and Sister Moody yeah. worshiping with us. And there are others in the congregation. We welcome you. Also, those who have joined us online, we also welcome you. And we trust that you'll be following the lesson. And, um, and you, if you so desire, your questions, could, you can type them in the chat and, um, and they will be answered at a later time after our Sabbath school, I guess. All right, Elder. Since we have been placed in the saddle, let us look at where we have to go. Okay. And okay. This, week, this week we are looking at singing the Lord's song in a strange land. Yes. Can you sing? <laughs> um, you put me on the spot, Elder. <laughs> well, I, I, I thank the Lord for the blessing that he has given. You know, so I do try to do a bit of singing from time to time. All right. Because here we notice that um, it seems that the children of Israel, mm -hmm. they were asked to sing the Lord's song. Yeah. But they were that just at a place like we are here, we, that is familiar with us. Yeah. They were in a strange, a strange land. land. And before you go to them, Elder, you know, when I saw this topic, it reminds me, a few years ago, there was a very popular song. Popular song, on, you know, on the radio, and I think even now, uh, um, a British group even made a copy of it. I think it originated in Jamaica, not sure. And then the British group copied it. And it was the same, these same words it used by the rivers of Babylon. Okay. Yes, there we yes. sat down. You yes, know? yes. They, those folks, they did, they did put the psalm to song. To psalm, to song. To secular song. Yes, yes. Yes. So here we are looking at um, the children of Israel. They had disobeyed God. And they were carried away captive. So while they were there by the river in Babylon, the captors request for them to sing the Lord's song. But they responded, Oh, looking at what they said, How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Do you think they, this was a, um, a case of them, you know, sort of, deriding them, you know, this, the, 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 the Israelite songs and their psalms that they sang, you know, were, were songs of thanksgiving and praise to God. Yes. And they were in a strange land and they know their captors are asking them to sing one of their songs. To sing one of their songs. Don't you think this is a, was a bit, you know, um, uh, sarcastic. Sarcastic, yes. yes. The word that really describes it. Yes, and when we do not follow, when we do not follow the word of the Lord, as you notice that the, the bakers were given particular recipe, yes. Yes. right? One had it to it, as we, as we observe, the other followed it. So what happened? When as a people, we do not follow the way of the Lord, the Eden watch us and sometimes try to make fun of us. That's so true. That's so true. Yeah. But if you notice, someone asked the question, how, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? And then again, the other side of the question is elder. Were they fear to respond that way? Couldn't they have sung the song? You know, in other words, who was it? Was it um, Paul and Silas when they were in prison? They still sang. They sing you know, the Lord's song. Yes, and look at what it, it ended up, um, the impact that, that, that had on their, 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 their jailers. Yes, but um, there's a difference. Tell, tell us. There, 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 there is a difference. Paul and Silas, regardless of where they are, their mind was on the Lord. But if you notice, when Jesus was on, on the Mount of Temptation. You notice what the devil did. The devil challenged him. So he turned to the word of God. That's right. so, so sometimes the devil 
The devil believes the word of God, but will always want it to use it to throw back on God's people. That's that is true. why we'll have to, we always have to follow precisely as the Lord directed us. That's right. now, you understand that a strange land can be anywhere. Can be anywhere. Any if, you, if you do not have the spirit of God with you, even if you come to church, you can feel strange. That if you are yes. in a strange place. That's true. And that is why when we do not follow the recipe, follow the leading of God, we won't make it mm -hmm. to the kingdom because it will be a strange land it to is. us. Mm -hmm. So true, Elder, so true. And because, uh, you know, the, and even now the whole matter of the singing in this strange land, why it's in our, even on our home, you know, Elder, we need to ensure that we sing the song in not as, as the children of Israel, you know, in their situation, but somewhat similar. Because um, in our communities, in our, in, our, in our neighborhoods, we might even be only Adventist persons in our family yes. there. And the question is, what type of um, influence are we shedding? there to our neighbors do they really are they seeing god in us are they seeing the true reflection of christ in our in our daily lives they you know these days elder when houses are not that far apart anymore you know once upon a time they were but nowadays to a great extent right you at know, your window <laughs> right at your window elder and you you talk too loud and your neighbor hear what you are talking about yes. you know what do they hear us talking about? Yes. Now, if you look at the, the writer, to take us on to the days of evil. Right? And when we, you, we go to Psalm, Psalm 74, right? Where you see again, we are Israel. Israel were, was run over by, by enemies. Yeah. They were part, you look at it and it's as if they were marched down. But then, what happened? They plead to God. They plead, they plead to God for relief from the, op the, the oppression that was applied to them. And if you notice, there in Psalm 74, beginning at verse 18, where he says, Remember this, that the enemy has reproached the Lord, and the, and the foolish people have blasphemed your name. Do not deliver or do not forget. Yes. All right. I think I see somebody indicating, Brother Omar is indicating to make a point, Elder. Yeah, well, let him make his point, but pretty quick because we are on a time limit here. Yeah. So the hoven soon go off. <laughs> the the bread can't afford for the bread to, to, to burn. burn. Yes, That's right. Question to the class: What is the law? Elder Kelly, you want to respond to that? I really wanted to make a comment, just for clarity. When we talk about the strange land, the only place that is not strange to the people of God is when we are inside this place, right inside here. Everything on the outside is the strange land. The Songs we sing, we do not sing the song of the world. We do not eat their food. Well, we shouldn't. Because that's strange food. Their music is strange. Their entertainment is strange. When we come here, we, we don't practice nothing of the world. We don't practice it. That means... The only time we are assured of not being in the strange land is like on the Sabbath day. And when we come to services on Sunday and Wednesday night. Because what we do in here is of the Lord. But when we go back into the world now, we need to know that Paul admonishes us that we must have a psalm. A hymn that we sing when we are not among each other. Because if we don't do that, as the lesson is coming up to, we are going to find that all type of things are going to take us. So our safety is with the brethren. 
because it is inside here that the righteousness of God is also personified in the life we live and it is amongst us the things that we do as a congregation. We don't curse bad words in here. But when we're out of the seven year no fight, am I right or wrong? We should have loved one for another in here. We should, because you're not going to find it out there. Other point, Elder. But Brother Omar asked the question What is the Lord's song? What is the Lord's song? Yes, yes, you know. And we hope, let's hope with it. What is the Lord? What is the song of the Lord? What is the Lord's song that the psalmist um, referred to? That the children of Israel were being asked to sing while in captivity in Babylon. The, the Lord's song. The Lord's song is the thought, as if you notice how, how his children express their feelings in prayers and in, so, in, in psalms and in song as reflected in this in the Psalms. So sometimes they put it to poetry, sometimes they put it to song, but they all, but it's always praising the Lord, always expressing praise. trust and confidence in the Lord. That's right. right? As you notice it, there are, the Lord did provide, for, provide us with a perfect world, but as sin, as sin intercepts God's plan, if you notice, the world is becoming more and more strange to God's people. Mm -hmm. But the recipe is very clear. As long as we live for it, as long as we live by it, we, can, we will be able to function. That's true. That's true. And you know, um, when we allow God to lead us, like you pointed out earlier, Elder, we need to when we allow God to lead us, he will lead us in the sure path. Yes. When we disobey him, then we are, you know, we will end up as Israel, um, as happened to Israel. But the question is, though, is it always that a person in tribulation, in distress, is it always as a result of, 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 of um, disobeying God's word? No, not necessarily because of a disobedience. When the, the young man that was, that was blind, when the question was asked to Jesus, sin. is he or is it was his parents' sin? Jesus said, neither he nor his parents' sin, right. but for the word of God to be fulfilled. So, very, so sometimes... The tribulations that we come under, it is, it is the fire that really separates the dross from the gold. That, 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 that tribulation yeah. helps to perfect our character. Because we even have the age-old um, example of, 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 of Job. Yes. You know, nothing that Job did, but he was being tested and tried. Like you said, only through testing and trying will the, the true gold be separated from the, from the, from the impure met, uh, metal. Definitely. And understand that all the issues of life is in the hand of God. Mm -hmm. So nothing will happen unless God permits it. That's right? true. As if, like in the, in the situation with the, um, the destruction of the temple, mm -hmm. and particularly the people thought that it was divine retribution. And what happened? When these things happen, the child of God will have to trust more because what up, the Eden yes. will see that yes. and tend to what? Tend to mock you. Yes. Because as a matter of fact, remember too, that it was the customary belief in the, in the, in the days that if my nation, you know, overthrow yours, it means that my God is stronger than your well, God. It's more powerful than, yes. than God, yes. Yes. So we will all remember that the Lord, but in any situation, the Lord is God, he is. and he is the God of our salvation. Yes, he is. Right? At death's door. And I trust that you are all healthy people this morning, so none of you are sick. But we have seen loved ones, we have seen brethren who have gone 
to death. There are, the sickness is so bad yeah. that we, are, we, we use that phrase. He's at death, death door. Yes, yes. He's on death bed. Sometimes you hear they say he's traveling. We see all these. But, but, but then we look at it and we see where, regardless of where you are, the mind, you call upon the Lord. As, as, as in the case of the psalmist elder, he called upon the Lord, yes. although he was at deathbed, yes. and the Lord answered him. You know, something that I have to admit that I admire about the, the psalmist, you know, whether uh, it was Asaph or any of the other psalms, in these psalms of lamentation, you know, they didn't hold anything back. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's, 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 the word of God isn't about only about, you know, the good things, the, the good experiences. We, you know, we see where the psalmist, you know, in the prayer there was requested in God, have you turn your face away yes. from us? Are you not hearing us? Have you, you know, shut up your bowels of compassion against us? Requested in God, more or less. Yes. You know? it, is, it, it is always the, an opportunity for you to look inside. It is. To look at yourself, search yourself, yeah. and then, and if you notice, then you pour yourself out to the Lord. Seek forgiveness first. Because when we are, when we are sick, even though the sickness is not necessarily retribution from God, God does not send sickness. But because we are in a world of, of sin, we need to first seek forgiveness. Make sure that we are in our right spirit with God, then we ask for the healing. Some say it is in the Bible, but we know that it is not in the Bible. There's this well-known phrase. God help those who help themselves. So, um, is, it, is it or isn't it that if I am in a, a spot, I am sick, and I need to try to do something about my situation and not bother God, you know, they one, 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 um, a former radio talk show host would say, God is busy with other important things. Don't run go to God with for something you can solve yourself. Yes. God God is not a God who created this world, set it in motion, and went on to take care of something else. Mm -hmm. Regardless of how vast the universe is, He is in control in of control. everything. Yes. No. How can we help ourselves? Yes, that's a question. How do we, we, we help ourselves by seeking the Lord? God knows that I am sick. God knows what I, how I need healing. But if I sit down and shut my mouth, what God expects me to do is to look into myself and then call out and call out to him. Notice all along, regardless of what God Israel did. When they find themselves between a rock and a hard place. When the suffering reached at point. They would call out to God. Even when they think that God is nowhere nearby. He, they call out to him. And he hears them. So even though you think that you are alone. And not, no help is nearby. You call out to God. And he will help you. While you are talking. It, um, some words you said. Reminded me. There was a book about the Bible and um, original the Bible and it was saying that there was this um, atheistic um, lecturer once and he wanted to show to his class that God is you know he, he not, doesn't exist and at the end of it he wrote on his book on his on the blackboard God is nowhere you know but there's this smart um, student who was a, a believer in God and he simply rearranged the word to say, whereas it was, it said, God is nowhere, indicating that there is no God. All he simply did was to separate the nowhere to say, God is nowhere. Here. Yes, yes. So God is always around, no matter our circumstances, no matter what we, what we are going through. You know, it is at times we, 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 we our experience might make us think like the psalmist is indicating that boy where is God yes 
coincidental, you know, um, it was only Thursday that I was in St. Anne's Bay, and there's this, this friend of mine, and um, I saw him with a, a, a young child, he said, which was his grand, one grandson. And um, this grandson happened to be the child of his, um, his late son-in-law. Now, let me put it in, did you unravel who I'm talking about. A few years ago, there was this um, incident that took place where um, a, a, a young man and his brother-in-law died. That was Pastor Lewis's son and his brother-in-law. So that, those two families, both had a son and a son-in-law who died through drowning on one incident, in one, one incident. incident, you know. And um, can you imagine what type of feeling that they had to bear in that situation? Yes. You know, but thank God, those two family held firm to the belief, their belief in God, Elder. And even when he, you know, I started to ask if that was his grandson, he said yes, and he mentioned whose child it was. And he sort of brought up the incident. But, you know, the bottom line, he said, God knows best. God, God knows best, yes. Because at times when we, when we think that God is not there, and I think the psalmist got to that point in, yes, Psalm, in Psalm 42, where he says that he, he yearned for God like the deer yeah. looking for water in the desert, yeah. right? If, if the psalmist feels that aloneness, and it, it's like a sparrow, a sparrow with out of sight of his nest. Maybe some boy destroyed the nest. And the sparrow is on, on the top of a tree or on the house top as the psalmist put it. And he's wondering. But God is always near to protect and to care for his Can I admit something to you, Ella? After coming through the lesson, especially Psalm 79 and 88, and, he, and witnessing the intense, in, intense you know, grief that was being you know, approached there, you know, you almost had to, at the end of it, shift yourself yes. and come back to reality. Come to reality. Yes, sir. It was intense. Yeah. And be, bear in mind that reality is not always like how we, we, we see it with the bare eyes. Reality is like when we see it, we see the big picture and, and see it through the eyes of faith. Right. 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 Because I remember that um, when the psalmist look at it, the psalmist look at the wicked. It look at those who are out there now making money. Look at the lottery. Millions of dollars. Just buy a ticket. Oh, the scammers. Are the scammers. Yes. And you, and you wonder, how is it that these people, they don't work. Morning after morning, they are up, they are dressed, and they are all around the place. They do nothing. Yes. Yet, they have money, and they have nice clothes, and they have nice cars, and yes. things like that. And that gets to the head of the psalmist. It does. It did. He, he wonder where, why, how is it that I am serving God and I am suffering. I don't have this and I don't have, and that person do not serve but gets everything. Yeah. But his mind is draw back to the bigger picture, realizing that you know what happened, it is just for a time. Yeah. You can't fathom it through material things. If you are, yes, if you are not careful, you, you, you may be led down, down the road of covetousness, yes. covetousness and then you abandon your faith. You know, that's I love the words that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their they, strength. They'll mount up with wings. Yes. Yes.
was. Because it was customary that if you are, you know, exactly right, that's right. No, I didn't. No, but um. Thank you, Elder. We have to wrap up. I get that touch here. But if you notice, as in the case of, of Job, one of the things that Job says, and, th and that is the lesson that we must take away, is that regardless of being alone, regardless of the suffering, we, right? Job said, though he slay me, yet will, yet I. will I trust him. So when you go through that loneliness, when you, go, when, when you don't have anything, when you see all everything around you is falling down, Hold on to your faith because God, you've got to just look at the bigger picture. Right? And, um, and, this, and, and as, we, as we close out, we look at this part where it says that in all things, the psalmist was led to the sanctuary. And when you enter the sanctuary, there you will find God. It's right. Amen. That's true. Let us, like God, the let us follow always follow the instruction, follow the recipe, and trust that the master will make the bread come through the best. God bless you. Thank you, elders Loelin and Carter. Did you actually notice that they they were both dressed in pink ties, one in bow tie and one in a regular tie, coordinating for the effort? Thank you so much. Singing the Lord's song in a strange land. The question was asked, what is the Lord's song? And somewhere in the lesson in the different days that were covered, we would realize that the song comes in varying forms as well. The trials and the tests and varying experiences that we have. Sometimes we are not able to sing, so we question where is God, but God is where he has always been. And one of the assurances is that the occasions of God's silence cause us to examine ourselves and to seek the Lord. He was asking if God will be silent forever. But we have to be humble when we come across these varying situations. It causes us to be humbled. And so, yes, we should be humbled with, with each of the experiences that we have. Really doing some introspection, right? And using the word, the recipe, to see where, which part of the recipe we are not putting in to have that perfect life as it is in Christ. And when we read Psalm 77, Psalm 42, we're seeing that he is in deep anguish. He is deep to the point where he, he is as if he cannot see any light of day. But as, it, as, as you read and go further, we realize that he is remembering the bountiful God. So in spite of his despair 
And as it appears that God has left him as on his own, he is now coming to thank God for the many things that he has done. So he is talking about the assurances. And there is one thing that we need to be mindful of here. It says the assurance of the psalmist, the assurance that the psalmist receives from God does not consist of explanations about his personal situation. Just as, just as with Job, he didn't know what was happening. There was no explanation. But rather a confirmation of God's faithfulness and trustworthiness. So is, is these two things going to help us to sing the song, you know? Our knowing God's faithfulness and his trustworthiness. So as we go through, we are encouraged to wait upon the Lord in faith, knowing that he is the same God who performed the miracles in, in Israel's past and the same God who is going to perform the miracles in our current situation and time. Amen? All right, so our Sabbath school this morning... The recipe for the successful Christian life. And we would have had our teams who were given recipes to break, sorry, to bake bread. Um, at this moment, we are going to be welcomed. Our Sabbath school will be welcomed by Sister Sasha Daniels. But I invite our, our teams of bakers to... Take your position here as we continue. Good morning, Sabbath School. Good morning, Sabbath School. Are we having a good morning? I am happy to see all our visitors here this morning. Are you happy to see the, the amount of visitors that we have? Well, I have some of the names. I don't have everybody, so I'll call the names that I have. And then all the others, I'll invite you to stand as well. We have Crystal Lee Anderson, and marie Swell, Basil Seaton, Hyacinth Seaton, Sanakia Morris, Murray Bennett, Shanil Lawrence, Dimitri Boyd, and then we have some persons we have not seen in a number of years, Dane and Jacinth McBain. <laughs> Please stand. Thank you. And we have Mario Daniels, my eldest brother. <laughs> And we have Kedonia Young. And we have a whole bunch of persons here. I don't have your names, but please stand and be acknowledged, all our visitors. Once you are not a member, <laughs> once you are visiting with us this morning, please stand. Eh, eh, why are you telling him to sit? He's still visiting. <laughs> all right. So these, these are all our visitors. We have more visitors, right? We thank you all for being with us here this morning, worshiping with us here in Monique. I pray you will make Monique your home and that we will see you every Sabbath. We welcome you. Do you eat bread, brethren? Everybody eat bread? No? What are some types of bread that we have? Wheat bread, sliced bread, white bread, raisin bread, shorty bread. Yes, all different kinds of bread. But there are three ingredients in bread. There are three main ingredients in all of these breads that we eat. Do you know what they are? Yeast, flour, and, and water. Those are the three main ingredients. And today, for our welcome, we're going to, we have three groups in the church. Some are water, some flour, and some yeast. So I want from the front bench to, all right, on both sides, for the first um, four benches, on 
either sides, you are the water. Then the last three benches would be flour, and the back around there is the yeast. And I want us to be kneading bread, because we all need each other, right? We N-E-E-D need each other, and we need to K-N-E-A-D each other, right? Right. And so this morning, I want persons from each group to greet somebody from the other two groups. Can we all do that? So if you are water, you need to greet two persons, one from the flower and one from the yeast, and welcome each other to church this morning. Can we do that, please? Please stand and let's do that. It's a good time to get acquainted. It's a nice time to know those are standing close beside you. to our baking and that ingredient is love let's combine all these ingredients on a daily basis to make lovely bread the bible says in john 6 verse 51 i am the bread of life sorry i am the living bread that came out out of heaven if anyone eats of this bread he will live forever and the bread also, which I will give for the world, the life of the world is my flesh. Let us continue to feed on the living bread so we may gain eternal life. Have a happy Sabbath. We are back in the kitchen again. Bakers. Please show your bread. Chef Juan. Here is our bread, baked as instructed. The recipe was perfect. I have baked bread for years, and honestly, I have never baked bread so perfect. I would not add or remove anything, and it tastes great. I hope you feel the same. Judge. Okay, let's try your bread. Hello, everyone. Hmm. It's baked to perfection. Thank you. You followed the recipe, and you have a high-quality bread. I would put it in any of one of my restaurants. Great job. Thank you. Chef, since the instructions were the same for both of us, we tried to add a little creativity in the mix. This will be the best bread you ever tasted. We also create multiple smaller buns, not according to the recipe, but so everyone can experience the taste for themselves. Judge? All right, let me taste this one. Oh, I have a fork here too. Oh. <laughs> What's that? Garlic and pumpkin. Sesame seed. Ugh. Sesame seeds burnt and the bread soggy. Oh my. <clears throat> the flavor is over powerful, overpowering. I think I'm going to need a mint or something. No oh man. Now for the results. Chef 2, I am so sorry. 
you are disqualified and you must exit. Chef One, you are the winner. Congratulations. You have followed the word of the master chef and you have bread that is re reflective of him. The story is told of a Syrian captain named Naaman. Naaman won many battles, and he was well respected for his knowledge and wealth. Naaman was also a leper, and we know the story well. He was instructed to dip seven times in the Jordan to be healed. This instruction was precise. The Jordan River was also muddy. To many, this instruction seemed very crazy and unimaginable. How could the prophet instruct such a man of valor to dip in such a river, the muddy Jordan? Nonetheless, Naaman obeyed the instruction. What was the result? He was healed wasn't he yes the bible is the word of god and it outlines many specific instructions for our lives some of these instructions are unpopular and we may not understand many of the instructions but we are called to follow these instructions laid out for us in the word of god because they enhance our lives and works in us in perfecting the spirit required to model the character of Christ. What does Deuteronomy 5.33 say? Walk in obedience to all that the Lord your God has commanded you, so that you may live and prosper and prolong your days in the land that you will possess. The Bible outlines recipes about the day we should keep holy. And so this is another recipe. The types of food we should eat. And this is another recipe. What our behavior should be like in order to be witnesses and to represent the Father always. And this is another recipe. But like many chef tools... We try to improve on the clear word of God and end up disobeying his commands. How many improvements have you made on this recipe? Proverbs 14.12 warns us of the dangers of trying to forge our own path to righteousness. There is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And in Matthew 15, verse 9, Jesus also spoke against making up our own guidelines for righteousness. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. What was the topic of our, of our worship this morning for the Sabbath school? Recipe for successful Christian living. So the doctrines of men can't be the recipe for the successful Christian living. It has to be the one coming from the Bible. Amen? Amen? Amen. So like the Pharisees, we may be guilty of adding on to the laws of God to appear holy in our own eyes. There is danger in this method, as it also makes serving the Lord seem burdensome. And this can deter persons from knowing the true character of Christ as revealed in his perfect law of love. We are called to follow God's commands as laid out in the Bible. Let us search the scripture to understand this for ourselves. Are you following God's commandments today? 
Are you following his commands? God's recipe for life makes the bread of life palatable and attainable and gives us true freedom and eternal life. Our Sabbath school now adjourns until next Sabbath when we will again share with you something to provoke the thought and the Christian perfection. We are now going to be singing, Then my living shall not be in vain. So the congregation is going to sing with us this song. How many of us know this song? Then my living shall not be in vain. If I can help somebody. Do you know that song? Yes. So we're going to stand and we're going to sing together to close our Sabbath school. And at the end of this song, we are going to do Psalm 51 and verse 10. Shall we stand? If I can. If I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can share somebody. Somebody, he's traveling wrong. Then my living shall not be in vain. Shall not be in vain. Then my living shall not be in vain. Then my living shall not be in vain. Then my living shall not be in vain. If I can help somebody as I travel along. Pass along, then my living shall not be in vain. If I can do my duty as a Christian ought, if I can do my duty as a Christian, if I can bring some beauty, bring back beauty to the world that's. message as a master taught then my living then my living shall not be in vain then my living then my living shall not be in vain the last verse again if I can do my duty as a Christian ought if I can do my duty as a Christian or if I can bring back beauty to the world that's wrath if I can spread God's message as a master taught then my living shall not be in vain. In vain. Then my living, come on now. Then my living shall not be in vain. No, my living. No, my living shall not be in vain. If I can help somebody, if I can help.
chapter 1 and verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Amen. All right, just a couple of um, reminders. Just a couple of reminders here. This song that we have just done, if I can help somebody as I pass along, it's a very serious hymn, you know. It's actually a hymn. This afternoon, we go on the road. Mm hmm it's the last, it's the first Sabbath, and we know what happens on the first Sabbath. We go in the afternoon. I would love to see everybody, but I know all of you are not going to come. I know that. But I'm still encouraging everyone to be a part of it. Because it is our duty to help others to come into this environment. Do you believe that what we have as a church is the truth? Do you think, do you know that it is the truth? Let me see, put up your hands. You believe that this is the truth? All right, some persons are not sure, but I know that this is it. And because I am convinced, you know, as a member of the congregation, I have to encourage you. Let us go meet the people. Tell them about our mission. We can't force anybody, you know. We can't do that. We can only encourage them. And we pray with them. The last time we went, we prayed. And it may be that you can get their contact number so that we can keep in touch and pray with them. The people need the Lord. They don't even know that they need the Lord. So I am encouraging you this afternoon. We get back after at 3.30 thereabout and we will just go to the area in a couple of weeks not a couple a few weeks time we're going to be into the proclamations of proclamations of oh how much three so we're going to be it's our responsibility our responsibility in our friends and uh, we never force people we don't believe in that and we don't threaten people we don't do that. We, we simply encourage one another. So I'm encouraging you to be out, even to come and walk with the brethren. Walk with the brethren. Just walk. Because you might not have the lyrics. Some people have more lyrics than you. But the lyrics that they have is actually in the word of God. It is from that word that they have the lyrics. And it sounds like them have enough lyrics. But it's actually what God asks them to do. So we, we prepare, we go out later on. That's the mission of the church. It's not inside these walls. It's going and telling people about the love of God and what is about to come. Many things are taking place in our world, trust me, and is about to, and has already started. And because we're not seeing it in Jamaica, we feel that it's not happening. But thousands are accepting this message. And the worst thing is that some people are going to be replaced. I have no intention to be replaced. So like what Jesus would have said to one of the disciples who were going to let him down, he said, whatsoever thou doest, do it quickly. So get involved. Get involved, brothers and sisters. Get involved. Get involved in the work. Sometimes you don't have to do nothing. Just go stand up. If it's even stand beside Brother Kelly. Just stand up, man, and listen what's going on, and you can nod. Yes, so I'm just encouraging you that way, all right? And you're not doing it for any of us. You're doing it because you have a friend and a relationship with Jesus. That's, that's what it's about. Go ye therefore, he said, and teach. That's what he says. I wish I could just stay home, but I can't. The prophet said it's like fire. Shut up. In my bones. I need people to hear this, what I know as a ghetto youth, and God bring me into this. Teach me how I'll dress nice now that people can look and turn up them face. But I may have to tell somebody, brother, because me never know this. This is this is royal living. Royal living. Ghetto youth are living a royalty. You understand what I say? Full of time. 
Yeah, man, a real thing, though. What do you mean? Look at us. We did ugly like dopey. And look for me, you know, I can't smile and people not afraid. So let us tell somebody, brethren, I'm just encouraging you. Come out, man. Make we go do the thing. All right, so the second thing is, tomorrow at Friendship, we're having the fasting and prayer for, in preparation for the, the crusade that we're going to be having, starting March 3. Uh, so tomorrow, it's Friendship, starting at about 9 o'clock, thereabout. Um, I'm just encouraging you. Come up, man. Make we pray. We need to pray about it. Isaiah 58, God says, I marvel. I searched for a man and I couldn't find any to intercede. There was no intercessor. Can you imagine? God said, I wonder that there was no intercessor. So if this group not praying for the people, then they're not dead. They are going to suffer the response. I bet they never know this, you know. It's better you were not aware of this truth than to know it and you're not dealing with it the proper way. So you are knowing a predicament because you can't go and learn what you know. No. Why may I put you on that spot? So tomorrow we are going up. Friendship. If you can make it, I would encourage you to. If you have other important things to do, well, that's just it. But I hope that there will be nothing so important. And it's not going to be the whole day, just for a few hours. We put certain matters to the Lord and we come back down off the hill and we go home. May God bless you. Pastor is going to be with us in a little bit to share the word. And I believe we're going to be having some dedication of babies, uh, at least a couple of them. So at that time, we will get back to you. May God bless you. Have a wonderful Sabbath now. Would you say amen? Isn't that wonderful that we can be in the house of the Lord on the Sabbath? You know much people don't know this and understand the importance of this. They think it's just a day. No. God says so. And it has not changed. Later. Kindly listen to the following announcements for Sabbath, January, sorry, February 3, 2024. So our district prayer and fasting will be held tomorrow at the Friendship SDA Church. Start, it starts at 9 and it ends at 1. And all are invited to attend. Sabbath 17, February 17, will be celebrated as Youth Day. The order of service is as follows. AY service will be first, followed by Divine Worship, Bible Class, Sabbath School, and Vespers. And the theme is Youth on a Mission, We Will Go. You are also encouraged to invite a youth to church. February 11 through to 16 will be celebrated as Christian Home and Marriage Week under the theme, Happy Families, Happy World, a foundation of love. The meeting will be held on Zoom 7 p.m. nightly with various presenters. And those who are in the church group, it is posted there. But for those who don't have the information as it relates to the ID, it's 810-614-95667. 810-614-95667. And the password is FAMILY, all caps. 
Proclamations of Hope Evangelistic Series, number three, and Social Intervention Program with Evangelist Pastor Jermaine Johnson starts on Sunday, March 3 through to March 30 under the big tent at Greyerfield Crossroad. 7 p.m. nightly, 9 a.m. on Sabbaths, and rest nights are Tuesdays and Fridays. Weekly Bible study by every word starts on Tuesday, February 6, with Pastor Jermaine Johnson. Read the word, eat the word, spread the word. Every Tuesday, 7 p.m. on Zoom. The meeting ID is 869-5222-9383. That's 869-5222-9383. And the password is Bible, all caps. All leaders of the Sabbath School and the Personal Ministries Department, you are invited to a special meeting on February 25 at the Brownstone SDA Church. Please be there. It starts at 1 and ends at, sorry, it starts at 10 and ends at 1. Youth Ike and Youth Elch Ike, February 13 and 14 at Madras. The Ike begins at 6 a.m. on February 14. And if you are staying over, that's from the 13th. You need to take your food with you. Youth Leaders Summit and Consecration Service for all Adventist youth leaders and Pathfinders club leaders. That is February 4, tomorrow starting at 9.30 online. The following persons, please meet with Sister Fullerton after divine worship today for about three minutes. T. Manning, Jay Sutherland, Sharik Mitchell, Alika Wallace, S. Daniels, Dacha Shoy, Dana Reynolds, Sandy F. White, Karen Waysom, Novreen Liao, Joy Manning, Earl Waysom, Azul White, Shavar Willis, and Sumoy Liao. And immediately following that meeting, all youth, please meet with Sister Fullerton. Today, February 3, is St. and Youth Federation Officers Installation and Consecration Ceremony. And this will be held at the St. Anne's Bay SDA Church, and it starts at 3. You're reminded to, to remember our sick persons. We have Sister Florence Howard, Sister Violet Atkinson, and Sister Maisie Brown. Please remember them in your prayers and visit also. Participants in next Sabbath's Divine Worship, February 10, Call to Worship, Brother O'Clooney, Offer Terry, Elder Reed, Scripture, Elder J L. Johnson, Per, Sister O. Cameron. Welcome, Sister H. McBain. Congratulations to our birthday celebrant, February 3 to 9. And on the 5th of February, we have Novelet Williams. And we say happy birthday when it comes, Sister Williams. Sun sets today at 6.03 p.m. And I leave with you a thought. Positions are temporary. Ranks and titles are limited. But the way you treat people will always be remembered. Have a happy Sabbath.
as we continue our worship, I invite us to sing together in our praise and worship session. We'll start by singing, only you are holy, only you are worthy, only you are wonderful, for there's no one else like you who is faithful, ever true. All my love, my heart, my life is a testimony. Only you. Majesty, 
Lift up. 
this hope that burns within our hearts, hope in the coming of the Lord.
Sabbath, everyone. Indeed, you sound good and you look good too. And I know that it is the blessings of the Lord that is upon all of us. Amen? Amen. I just want to say welcome. Welcome, welcome to each and every one who have made it possible to be here this morning. And we have some special people in our midst. I am going to ask them all to stand. I have some names here. I'm going to Call them, and if there are other members or visiting friends of other from other churches or wherever you're from, I'm going to ask you to stand and join us for the welcome. Crystal Lee Anderson, very well, amen, brethren. We are happy to have you. Keep standing, uh, Anne Marie Sewell, Anne Marie, amen. Let them feel good, please. Basil Seaton, where are you, Basil? Amen. Hi, Sin Seton. Shauna K. Morris. Sanaki, I'm sorry. Sanaki and Morris. Is, I need to speak with you later because you're a Morris. Okay? All right. Uh, Murray Bennett. Where are you? Amen. There is Chanel Lawrence. Chanel. Amen. Dimitri Boyd. Amen. He can't stand. He has some good weight. Okay, great. Wonderful. And Dane McBain. Amen. Wonderful. Justin Seaton McBain. Where are you? Amen. And Maria Daniels. Where is he? Amen. And Erica Steves. Where is Erica? Okay, all right, amen. All right. Are there any other visiting friend with us today? If once you're a visitor, I see a whole lot of you. I want you to stand. All the visitors. Look at them. They're popping up like lilies. Wow, they're looking good. Amen. And we are going to give them a special wave. Those of us who are sitting, let us raise our hands and we are going to give them a special wave. This is saying, welcome, we are happy to have you here. You may be seated, thank you. And for those who are watching online, you're no less. We are happy to have you sharing with us. And of course, this morning, we served bread. French bread, um, raisin bread, brown bread, white bread, whatever bread it was. But we are sure that today, we have the bread of life, amen? That's the best bread we could ever have. And I'm glad that you are here to share it with us. And may you, your souls be watered and blessed. And you have a wonderful day in Jesus. May all of us, our members, our children, our young adults, or everybody, be welcome today and stay blessed in the Lord. God loves you and so do I. Welcome. Sabbath blessings to you all, church. It's so good to see you, and you're all so beautiful. You're shining like roses. May I invite you to stand as we repeat together the affirmation of our faith, Exodus 28 through 11. 
Exodus 28 through 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy kettle, nor the stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. You are now called to worship. Father, we are gathered in your presence to worship you. We are not worthy, but you are merciful, and that's why we are here today. Pray, O oh God, that you will remove from our thoughts the things that are worldly, the things that are not like you. May we focus on heaven, and may the words that are uttered today, may those words bring conversion and closeness. These are my askings in Jesus' name. Amen. Our hymn of praise, number 321. Thank you. 
our anthem of praise will come to us from Sister C. Young. It is well with my soul. It is well with your soul. I see where God is so merciful. Our, our lungs is working perfectly. The air that she breathes, perfect. And that's what our benefactor do to us day by day. He allows us to, or 
bodies or organs to be working that she can give praises to our king and today is no exception we'll give him praise in our tithes and offering today as we give bountifully that's how god gave us bountifully he didn't hold back anything so as the deacons stand our bountiful benefactor hear what our bountiful benefactor does to us does to us the power of God is manifested in the beating of the heart. In the action of the lungs, we see the demonstration a while ago. And in the living currents that circulate through the thousand different channels of the body, we are indebted to him for every moment of our existence. And for all the comforts of life, the powers and abilities that Elevate men above lower creature are the endowment of the creator. He loads us with his benefits. We are indebted to him for the food we eat, the water we drink, the clothes we wear, the air we breathe. Without his special providence, the air would be filled with pestilence and poison. He is a bountiful benefactor and a preserver. As we are continually receiving the blessings of God, so are we to be continually giving. When the heavenly benefactor ceases to give to us, then we may, ex we have, we, then we may be excused, for we shall not have nothing to be bestowed. God has never left us without evidence of his love in that he did us good. So as we give today, viewers online, those who are in the congregation, as you give, God didn't hold back anything. He gave you life this morning. He wake you up. You're in your right mind. Faculties are working perfectly. We know that today is the blessed day where we can come apart and give him worship, give him glory, give him thanks for all that he has done for you during the week. And for the strength and the ability that you have given us. Some of us, our, our monthly salaries sometimes are in the figures that blow other people's mind. But how much of that? He asks us for one tenth, just a small amount. And sometimes we envy him. As you give today, don't hold back. God is our benefactor, He provides our daily needs and don't think about what gonna happen tomorrow when I give make it a point of duty to give take out his portion no matter how small his salary may be he can multiply the small when you multiply two numbers sometimes you get double figures so listen to me the small that you have you can multiply that in triple and more figures but you have to trust him today. As the deacons wait upon you, let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your goodness towards us. Father, you have nef never left us nor forsake us. And as you people give today, we ask that we not only give our monetary value, but we give our lives in total in your care so that you can use us in your cause. We pray for Christ's sake. Amen. The deacons will now wait upon you for tithes and offering. And as a priest, he will help me help us to sing 185. Jesus is all the world to me, my life, my joy, my all. He is my strength from day to day. Without him, I would fall. 185. Jesus is all the world to me, my life, my joy, my all. He is my strength from day to day, without him I would fall. When I am sad to him I go.
them to come up front while Uncle Azul would feed them for us. Let us sing together. Jesus loves the little children. Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world. Whether they are black or white, all are precious Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. They are black or white, all are precious in His sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Happy Sabbath, everyone. I'm feeling a bit nostalgic, you know, because last time I, I was down there. Now I'm up here. And I came up here until I was, what, 17? I don't know what's happening to the teens. I'm afraid. Come on. But um, how are we doing today, boys and girls? How are we doing, doing today, bigger boys and girls? Okay, so I have a story for us today. And this story is well known, I feel. I'm not sure if the little ones know it, but it's a well-known story, and I'm going to repeat it to you as best I can. Please bear with me. So who knows Paul and Silas? Does anyone here know Paul and Silas? Okay, I'm going to tell you about him. Okay, so the title of the story is Singing in Prison. What's the title of the story? Come on, not hearing it. What's the title of the story? Singing in Prison. Right. So Paul and Silas were in a dark prison with their hands and feet in chains. No one would have liked to be there, but they were not sad. Would you be sad if you were chained up? Oh, no one is sad? You want to sad? Me would have sad. On the contrary, they sang hymns of praise to God. And suddenly there was a strong earthquake that shook the jail cell. All of you know what an earthquake is, right? It can be scary, right? Right, it was a scary earthquake. 
the, the walls fell and the door swung right open. It was very easy to escape. Would you run away if you were in jail and the doors just open up? You don't run away? Me don't run away? <laughs> Me don't run right away. The door swung right open. Did they run away? No. Because had they had done that, had they done that, the jailer would have been punished. So the jailer came and he asked them, why didn't you run? And their answer was, it's because we are Christian. And the, you know what the jailer asked? The jailer asked, what do I need to do to be a Christian like you? What about us? What can we do to allow others to see God working through us to come to us and ask, what can we do to be like Christians like you? Anybody? What can you do to show others your Christian love? Come here, Andy. Tell them about Jesus. Anybody else? Tell them about Jesus. Anybody else want to say anything? What can you do to show others your religion? Sharing. Right. So tell them about Jesus, sharing, and also live a life pleasing to God that others may see your good works and glorify, that glorify your Father which is in heaven. Matthew 5, verse 16. The Bible says, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and all your people. And that's from Acts 16, verse 31. And I want you all to remember to ask Jesus to help you to be like Paul and Silas and praise him every day. So now we're going to sing a quick song and I'm going to ask everyone who knows this song to sing along with me. All right? Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. It was good for Paul and Silas. It was good for Paul and Silas. Good for Paul and Silas. It's good enough for me. Old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Old time religion. It's good enough for me. It will bring us all to glory. It will bring us all to glory. It will take us all to glory. It's good enough for me. Thank you all for listening to my story. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Oh, my bad, guys. Jesus loves the little children of the world. So in my haste, I forgot to pray. So <laughs> let's take a quick second to give glory to our God. Let's just get into the attitude of prayer. Most loving and eternal Father, as we come to you once again, I'd like to tell you thanks for allowing us the opportunity to see the end of another week and the start of another Sabbath. As we go throughout today's services, I pray that we'll be enlightened, and I ask you to give us the strength to be like Paul and Silas and serve you as the Christians that we are. In your son's name I pray, amen. Amen. While we await the ministration of the word, please stand with me for the scripture reading. I'll be, re I'll be reading a little more than the two verses that was given. And so I'll be taking the scripture from 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I'll be reading from verse 13 to the end. From verse 13 to 20. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Meat for the belly, and the belly for meat. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. God ought raise up the Lord, and will also raise us by his own power. Know ye not that your bodies are the temple? Uh, sorry, are uh, members of Christ, 
Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of an harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, said he, shall be one. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. And in your spirit, which is God's. This is the word of the Lord. Now, dear Lord, as we pray. into the attitude of prayer. Eternal Father and our God, hallowed be your most holy name. This afternoon, Father, we, your humble children, do congregate in your presence to give you thanks and praise for all your many blessings towards us. Father, we want to thank you for your protection, for your provision of the necessities of this life. We want to thank you for the plan of redemption for our life. Father, thank you for preserving your words, your testimonies, that we can have a knowledge of you and of that plan in giving your only son as a ransom for our lives. Father, we thank you for your protection, your guidance throughout the week of toil and labor, and for this privilege to congregate in your presence on this your holy day. O oh God, I want to commit to your care all the sick, the homeless, the less fortunate, those in places of confinement. Those in war-torn countries, disaster-affected areas, those mourning the loss of loved ones. Wherever they are across the length and breadth of the third, Father, I pray that you'd administer unto them according to your will. And, O oh God, for the one you have chosen to break the bread of life, you know who he will. I commit him to your care. And ask, Father, that your Holy Spirit will take control of his mind. That, Father, speak to him. Speak to him and to your people. That they may be edified and your name be glorified. And, O oh God, for your remnant people, your modern Israel, Father, your Laodicean church. I pray, O oh God, that you'll wake us up. Anoint our eyes with eyes of that we can discern who we are, the time we're living in, and what our calling is. 
And O oh God, empower us to proclaim that message that will prepare the world for your coming. And O oh God, when you shall come to take from this world your children, may we here, present in the hearing of my voice, be numbered with those who will be caught up to meet you in the air, whether it's by resurrection or transformation. And so we shall ever be with you in that world made new. Want to then, O oh God, keep us faithful and keep us true. And Father, do for us the things I fail to ask of you that are in accordance with your will. In Jesus' name and for his sake I pray. Amen. Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters. What a wonderful pleasure and privilege for us to be alive and in the house of the Lord. We give him praise. Somebody give him the highest praise. At this time, we have some babies in our midst to be blessed, some children, and we thank God for them. What do you say? We have Kiara Denise McBain. We have Alexandra Steer. And we have Shania Bellarosa Boyd. I now invite the parents of these children to come forward, followed by the family members and extended relatives who are here to support them, even as we sing, Jesus loves the little children. Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world, whether they're black or white, all the precious, the said that he loves the Let's sing it again. Jesus loves the little children. Mm -hmm. All the children of the whether they are black or white, all the pressure. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Somebody say, Bless the Lord. Is a whole village came out today. So we need to have these babies blessed every Sabbath to bring out this village every Sabbath. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to call the names of the children again and ask the parents to indicate so they can know who's whom. So Kiara Denise McBain. Praise the Lord. And Alexandra Steer. Somebody say praise the Lord too. Shania Bellarosa Boyd. What a beautiful middle name. Bellarosa. Who chose it? You chose it. Amen. Now, fathers, raise your hands. Fathers of the children, raise your hands. Brethren, it's a good look. All three daddies are here. We are too accustomed with DNA, meaning in Jamaica, that is not available. But today, we are reminded that there are still fathers who stand by their responsibility. What do you say? I am very happy to stand here today, parents of these wonderful children, to Bless your children. We'll not turn them away like the disciples opted to because we still believe that children are the heritage of the Lord and the fruit of the womb is his reward. A baby blessing or dedication is not a punctilia event. It sets off something that's linear. Thus, the blessing of a child, just as it is for the blessing of a people, Elder Moody, is remaining constantly in the hands of the Lord. There are three kinds of people. There, there's a set of people. There are some people, rather, who only come to church for the three Bs. When they're born, when they're born, and when they're born. Bam. So when they're born, they are taken, so they can hardly resist it, even if them holler. Baby blessing. When they're born, here comes the bride. And when they're born, you have died. 
Do not teach this kind of culture to your children, but keep them before the Lord. The Bible says children are the heritage of God, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. They are a gift. They never came about because of the strength and sterility and versatility of the men. No, not because you drank strong back on roots. It's because God chose you to bring these little babies in the world. And because it's a heritage, you're in Jamaica, you talk about National Heritage Day, it is something that is what? Inherited. It's passed down to us. Monkeys never generated us, much less to be the ancestors of our beautiful babies. You were created in the image of God, and so are those that you were able to bring forth through procreation. Thus, you must take good care of God's property. So as much as you were the one who bore the pain at the maternity ward, hello, I borrowed goods. And when you borrow things, you must take good care of it. Because until these children become, come of age and are in a position to make their own choices as autonomous individuals, everything that has to do with them will rest on your shoulders. I admonish you, therefore, before God and man, not to raise them according to TikTok standards and Instagram, but to raise them according to the standards of the word of God. You will never have blessed children if you don't keep them in the hands of the blessed Redeemer. And so many of our children are being exploited now. They are being used as dollies and entertainers just for people to have likes and followers. But at the end of the day, protect your children from the evils of social media because they never took themselves in the world i know that parenting is like paying rent but nobody told you to become one <laughs> so you have to take on that responsibility like a boss yes i know many of you were not yet ready for them you were only looking for a little pleasure but ended up with a little ledger that will now affect your 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 your, your ledger beyond measure a little treasure that will now affect your ledger beyond measure but it's your responsibility. We are happy for the grandparents who are around, and the aunties and the uncles and the siblings, well, aunties and uncles. But it's not their children. They can assist you in raising them. But don't you shirk the responsibility of being there, being present, not just offering presents as in physical material gifts, but being involved in your children's lives. Because what you set as a foundation will determine the kind of persons they will be in the future. Three wonderful babies today, um, and we are so blessed to have them all at once in the Monique Church to present them to the Lord. If you will adhere to the biblical standards, parents, of raising your children in the fear and admonition of the Lord, I invite you to raise your hands. Praise the name of the Lord. Extended family members, if you will play your part, in granting a supportive role to the rearing of these children, please raise your hands. Look around you so when you call them, then again, no long talk. Extended congregation, the village at large, if you will do all that is within your power to assist these parents in raising these children in the fear and admonition of the Lord, I invite you to stand. Look around you, parents. You have a little run run to make because you need a babysitter or so. Just mark the faces here today. We bless the name of the Lord. I'm going to invite Elder Kelly to come and join me. And the, the eldest elder, Papa Daniels, is he here? Where well, Elder Daniels, come, yes. He's the father elder now, no? Yes. So we are going to join near to these children. And the other elders who are on the platform, press close as we get ready to present them to the Lord. Please come a little closer, parents. So you will hold them and we will gently rest our hands on them. Kiara, Alexandra, and Shania. Let's go. Let us bow our heads a prayer. Everlasting Father, and our God, we thank you for your heritage and for all three today that we've come to present to you. In a sense, really, we give you but thine own. For they are because you have blessed us with them. I place in your hands these wonderful children, Kiara, Alexandra, and Shania. 
I pray, God, that you will now pour out your spirit upon their hearts and that you will surround them with their guardian angels and that you will pronounce your blessings and favor upon them. Provide for their parents that they may supply their needs. Not just the needs of food and other material things like clothing, but the needs of emotional support. The need, Lord, of being there for them to interact with them and to guide them, to inspire them and to be good examples to them. I pray that you will protect these little ones, Lord, from the enemy. And fly every trap that has been set for them and surround them with the angel of the Lord. That they will always be delivered. And I pray that the examples that they will be exposed to in the homes will be as such that even when they've grown old and are able to choose otherwise, they will still choose to follow Jesus. May your presence be felt in their lives. May your favor shine in and through them. And may their family, Lord, stay close to you that the blessings of your covenant may indeed pass on to their generations. Into your care, replace them all. And we thank you for the purpose which you have brought them into this world. And I pray that nothing will thwart this, O God, but that we will live to see them fulfilled to your honor and glory. Thank you, Lord, for these babies. And we place them now in your wonderful hands, knowing that he who places everything in God's hands will eventually see God's hands in everything. Even as we pray your blessings upon their parents, their family, the church at large and community, in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the sweet Holy Spirit, let the church say, Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Whether they are black or white, all our precious in this sight, Jesus loves the little children of the world. Before you go, parents, let's make it official. Photographer Junior, where have you disappeared to? That Junior, Akeem, same blood. So Shania, Bella Rosa Boyd. So here in my hand, I have some, oh, I'm going to take it from that side. Oh. So we have some baby blessing certificates. So they, if you, you need to put them up. You see them nice? Frame them. Because in the event you misplace the birth papers in the future, the RGD will send back to the church where the baby was blessed. They will say christened, but it's, we don't do infant baptism. But this is what it's referring to. And our records will be able to substantiate. So your children and a jacket. So keep good care of these. Take good care of these. So this is for the Shania. I'm sure that she's going to love the Bella Rosa. I like it. It's a nice name. Uh, Sister Howard is smiling bright because things go on for you. Great, great. Got that? Amen. Alexander. Let's steer in this direction. You hold on to it now, Daddy. Yeah, man. Hold on for the boat of you. I want her to boat hold her. Yes, she's touching her certificate too. <laughs> Got it? Amen. And Kiara. Well, come home. <laughs> oh, these ones brought, brought a lot of paparazzis. Yes, so here we go now. Amen. You're welcome. God bless you, brothers and sisters, and enjoy the rest of the Sabbath. Today, we are privileged to have Presenting the word, our pastor, Pastor Jermaine Johnson. Pastor Johnson rarely does not need an introduction, neither locally or internationally, because he's well known. However, we know that he's been working with God. He's determined. He's focused. He is an evangelist who hungers he thirsts to ensure that souls are born into the kingdom. And so today, if you are here 
and you have not yet given your heart to God, I have no doubt that the words that will come from Pastor Jay will be words that will help to encourage you to repent and be baptized. I ask that you pray for Pastor as he delivers the word that he will do so with clarity. Turn your cups right up and accept every blessing. And if you know that for some reason you need to get closer to God, then today is your day. Sit back, relax, and pray, and God will do the rest. Now, we heard before Sister Young, melodious voice indeed, and I want to sing like her when I grow up. But until then, I'm going to invite her to do for us the song of meditation.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. How great thou art. Won't you bow your heads with me for prayer? Everlasting Father and Lord God, we've been reminded today of your greatness, your sovereignty, your lordship and authority over all the universe. You never acquired it through a coup, nor inheritance, for it exists because you created it. We therefore acknowledge ourselves as your subjects, subject to your guidance, your direction, your leadership. And as we come today to explore your words, to receive instructions and inspiration of how you desire us to live our lives, may we be receptive, O oh God. Empower me by your Holy Spirit and use me to present a word to all of our hearts that will transform us for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much, Sister Maxine, and it's great to have you back home for the words of introduction and my friend Kedonia for those two powerful songs. It's been a while since I've seen you, so you must come back very soon to make it up. I want to say a very special word of welcome to, to all of our guests who are here today. Whether you are a Seventh-day Adventist member from elsewhere or you are a non-member of the church from the community here in Monique or elsewhere. If you are a guest falling in either of those categories, please raise your hand. Amen. Put your hands together and just welcome our guests into the house of the Lord today. Let me also take the opportunity to welcome our virtual guests online. And today my wife sends her greetings to you and she's watching online. So give her a big amen for me there. She's there engaging with the people as she usually does along with Sister Waysam and Elder Waysam. Elder Waysam isn't so hot today despite the heat of day. So let us keep him in our prayers. Good to see you too, Sister Naomi Trotz from Guyana, always tuning in at Monique. And those of you who are watching from elsewhere across the world. As I get into the word that the Lord has laid on my heart to share with us today, Elder Moody, just want to remind us that tomorrow morning at 9, at Friendship, we have our district prayer and fasting session to pray for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Every manifestation of great evil that we see in our world is as a result of demonic spirits on the loose. And in order to counter them, we must be led by the Holy Spirit of God. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what church? Principalities and against powers and against what? Spiritual, weak, um, the rulers of the darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness. Where, where, where do we find that? In high places. That is why I come March 3 to 30, under the big tent, God's will in that gray field right up there at Crossroads, Sister Llewellyn, we go for proclamations of hope season three with evangelist Pastor JJ and the gospel team. So come and partner with us as we proclaim the three angels' messages, as we proclaim Jesus Christ. And uh, we'll be live streaming for those who are in foreign lands and far parishes. But for those who are close to home, we invite you to be there physically every night, except Tuesday and Friday, starting at 7 p.m. And on Sabbath, starting at 9 a.m. for four weeks as we lift up the banner of Prince Emmanuel. And I don't know about you, but I'm excited when I get to do something for God. Because I should not have been enrolled in God's cause. But because of God's grace and mercy, sinners saved by grace can become co-laborers, uh, brother, sister, Satan, in the kingdom of God. Somebody bless the name of Jesus. That is why when you come to church, you must come with a certain level of awe uh, and a certain uh, a, 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 a composure because you, you, you're not coming here by entitlement. Uh, you are coming here by privilege that is granted through the grace of God. 
That's why the psalmist says, I will enter his gates with what? Thanksgiving in my heart and in his courts with what? Praise. And if God gave you a reason to praise him today, sound the highest praise, my nigga. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. I speak to you today on the subject, there's a lean on me. There's a lean on me. Yeah. Look at the neighbor next to you and say, there's a lean on you. L-I-E-N. There's a lean on me. Uh, many of us, if not all of us, have had times in our lives where we experience certain needs. Not wants, needs. But we're unable to acquire those needs or fulfill them because of our lack of funds. In some instances, we were completely broke. Whereas in others, we had some of the money, but we needed a little catch up. Am I talking to anybody? See, like I'm preaching to a rich church. It sounds good. <laughs> I, I remember back in the days when folks wanted to take out furniture from any of our local furniture brands, you know them, they would be required to have a guarantor. Any testimonies here? Let me see the hands of those who have ever stood guarantor. Well, I see that hand right again. And what that did is that you signed to it like you were the one taking out the bed, Brother Pullet and the younger. So if the person defaulted and ran off to the Cayman Islands, for instance, and the company is unable, Brother Johnson, to establish contact, then they call Azul because Azul was the guarantor. And then I called in to say, Azul, you were here as a reference. I'm just checking to see if you've heard from Jeremy. And we've been trying to touch base with him. They're going to call you to bad you up like a you sleep on the bed. <laughs> because by virtue of having a guarantor, that person is standing as a sort of security. <laughs> and even collateral <laughs> for that debt which you incurred. But the bed is a smaller kind of debt than the furniture that we often take out. Not for need, but they say sometimes we take out things to pop style and people we don't like. And then you take something from the court and end up in the court. But then we have more expensive undertakings like mortgaging a house. And most companies, unless you are in the kind of standing that would need their services will require collateral for whatever they give to you. So we learn about secured and unsecured loans. And if the loan is unsecured, then the interest rate is typically what? Much higher because it's more risky of an undertaking. On the other hand, if the loan is secure, then the interest rate isn't so bad because the item itself or something of value that you've presented otherwise stand as a lien, as a as security, collateral rather, for that which is owed. I recall in college, God bless me, I was operating my business, Johnson School of Music, JSM, was growing nicely. You have heard my true testimony and all. And I thought it was the time given the demands of my work, teaching full-time private little institute, moving between university, the standard nine to five, and my afternoon for my private business that I needed a little mobility and not the type that comes from a mobile phone. So having assessed the situation, I hosted an evening of musical exhilaration and showcased the talents of my children and the orchestra I then directed. And God blessed me. I got sponsorship and I was able to make a little thing. And I said it was time now to get a set of wheels. But because I never had enough to purchase it cash, Elder Kelly, I decided to approach the bank and I thought I had a little dignity then that would qualify me to qualify. Everything worked out well. I can remember vividly, uh, Sister Luke, when I was through, you know, signing off the documentations and securing the vehicle, it was late that evening. And I was so excited driving off that car, Martin Mando, with Sister Kelly, with my nice 2007 Bluebird, uh, Nissan Bluebird Sylphie, with my 17 inch serendipity sports rims, inherited in the purchase. 
And I wanted to have the vehicle a little sooner. But because there are processes involved, because I was borrowing some money from the bank, they had to cross every T and what? That every I. And one of those things is that whereas I claimed ownership of that vehicle, I only glanced the title for the title remained with the bank. And I had to sign, sign a lien document to show that they keep an interest in the vehicle as it served as collateral for the loan. That in case I defaulted, they could sell the car and settle the debt. I was so happy to have my first wheels that I drove out after dusk. And I never recognized that I never turned on the lamps until I passed the police station in Mandeville town. <laughs> but because of the heavy traffic, at least others were shedding a little light on the subject. And it was not so obvious. Yeah, man, with gladness, I decided I'm not going straight home. I don't want anybody to trap me, for I wouldn't be able to put on, I was not able to put on the, 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 the alarm system till the following day. So I went up to the university, parked in the parking lot, went to the library to do some work, did some rounds, uh, and then I went back home. And the following morning, instantly I went to the technician for him to put on an alarm system to secure my property. And I was doing that because I said, man, I have good property, a car for myself, but there was a lean on it everything was going well I was paying my monthly premiums and I felt accomplished not that I put any great uh, not that, that I'm idolizing a piece of uh, material but it really helped to improve the efficiency of my life because come on I was a businessman I was a working man at the side and I was a student at the same time I needed to be able to move swiftly between things come on now one day, I'm going somewhere with all of this, and when the story is done, it will set the foundation, the word will just fly. One day, I was at my business place teaching a group of students with a set of my employees. And a man stepped upstairs, and he was admiring how things were going inside the studio. And he said, man, I love the operation here. And I said, thank you, man. And of course, in my heart, I'm saying, new clients. <laughs> And he said, yeah, are you the one in charge? I said, yes, man. I said, what's your name? I said, I'm, I'm Mr. Johnson. He said, pleased to meet you, man. My name is Buckley, and I am here to repossess your vehicle. <laughs> Thank God I was talking to him on the corridor when I stepped out for a bit while others were handling the business. By the time I glanced downstairs, Mr. Stewart, I recognized that they wedged their vehicle behind mine, and two men were down there guarding it like a private property to them. So by this time, I said, what do you mean repossess my vehicle? And he took out a letter of repossession from the financial institution I had gotten the loan from. And I saw all the details demanding me to pay the balances to close the loan and forthwith. And all sorts of threats along with the same. And he showed his ID to me. And he said, you have two options, Mr. Johnson. You can either sign this document to authorize me to drive the vehicle into Kingston to be impounded. Or you can actually fail to do so and we put it on a record and you pay the $60,000 to take it over there. You know, say my life mash up now. And as much as I wanted to rebel against his intentions because of the authorization he had in hand, I had to back off. Long and short of the story, in making one of my monthly payments, I had a little running balance over and never paid attention because when those systems are set automatically, if you're supposed to pay $20,450 and you're going to pay $20,000 and never pay attention to the four fifty, dollars even the four fifty dollars can default you. But I said to the man, but the bank never called me. If they called me for such a small balance, I would have run down to the bank and paid. He said, that's not my business, Mr. Johnson. I have this document and I'm here for the vehicle. And I recognized I could have fight that battle. So I said, would you be so kind as to allow me to go by my apartment to offload the things in the vehicle and then to sign it over for you to drive it? He said, certainly. And one car followed me. And he drove inside the vehicle with me. Now I left me by myself. All of this liberty. Not because of what? There was a lean on the vehicle. Because if I owned that vehicle in every sense of ownership, Elder Kelly, it could have pulled off a stunt like that. 
And I tried my best, Elder Moody, to handle the situation, Sashoy, with such grace, so as to rub out shame and embarrassment out of my eyes. I got home, took out my personal effects, and signed over sadly a document authorizing a bailiff to drive away my car into Kingston. Now things were tight. I called the bank. I was getting a bad attitude. And I said, look at the excellent working relationship we've had. And if I'm owing something overflowing from January, how it is that February was all right and March and April. They said, that's not how we do our thing. So that amount is now months, in, um, um, out, months outstanding. And they said, listen, in order for you to get back the vehicle, you have to pay three months in advance of the amount you pay per month, you know. So I was comfortably paying now my monthly premium. Now I have to find three months advance payment. The little bit owing, 30000 for the bailiff fee, and, the, um, and a certain amount per day for the vehicle to be stored in Kingston. When I did the math, it seemed, it, it seemed to me like it was best to just call it a day and get another vehicle. But then there is your credit to protect. I was stressed out, Brother Omar. Because I couldn't see how I would find enough money to meet the demands of the bank. But one day, my mother reached out to tell me that she received a letter for me at the post office for my permanent address remained there in Portland. And I got it sent down only to find out that it was the letter the bank had sent to me giving me notice of repossession. My instincts kicked in and I did a little research. And when I perused the Higher Purchase Act, I learned that if the loan is defaulted and you want to repossess it, then you must give the client at least seven days, clear days notice. And all you need to do is to send the notice to the address on file. Whether they practice going to the post office or not, that's their business. Whether they have received it or not, that's up to them. As long as you've sent it to the address on file and seven days have passed without the outstanding amount being settled, then you might end up. All you just say, Amen. So when I checked Elder Carter, the date that the letter arrived at my post office in Portland was the day before the bailiff came <laughs> to repossess my vehicle. The letter was correctly dated from a week before, but apparently it sat negligently on somebody's desk for an entire week and then the day before it came to Portland somebody went to the crossroads post office and sent it off because it's Tom's for years evidence and then it reached my post office the following day so I got technical and I called them and I said listen to me you have illegally repossessed my vehicle I said excuse me the letter was sent me said the letter was properly dated but I was not notified I was only given 24 hours notice 24 hours notice and I said, please bring that letter to the branch that is closest to you so that we can assess it. When I took it in, the man looked at it and said, oh, it's the truth. Um, let me take a copy of them. I said, anyway, you yeah, copy it, may I come? Because this is my chief piece of evidence. Come on, somebody. When he copied it now, they started running around. That we're going to have our legal department look at it. I spoke with the Consumer Affairs Commission and guided them into what was happening. And they were giving the runaround. And one day I called the man. I wanted them hierarchy in Kingston. And I said, listen, according to the law, if you illegally repossess the vehicle, you would have defaulted and all funds paid by the borrower must be returned without consequence. And I was thinking about an upgrade. So maybe I should just leave the vehicle in your hands. Uh, get back my money and start afresh. Come on now. They called me in a couple of days time and said, Mr. Johnson, are you at least able to pay for the storage fee? Mr. said, listen to me, sir, you're testing my patience. I am considering to sue you now for embarrassment, public, uh, and you, I mean, humiliation and loss of use for almost a month. He said, oh, pick up the vehicle in the morning. I went over. I collected my vehicle, went to the HQ of that bank, got my documents from some long-faced personnel, and they said, sign this, sign that. And one of them faced it, I said, next time we will be more diligent. I said, they'll not be a next time. And I instantly engaged a friendlier institution closer to my heart uh, to get a, a sum to refinance that loan. 
I'm going somewhere with all of this, somebody. So, whatever the outstanding amount I had left, they granted that to me, and I went and closed the loan with that commercial bank. <laughs> you know, with that commercial bank. <laughs> and I was free of them. But though I was free from their lien and encroachments or encumbrances, <laughs> encumbrances, it, my title was not transferred to me. Come on, somebody. Because it was now owned by somebody else, albeit on better terms. So you understand the essence then of the lien business. A lien is a legal right or interest that a lender has in a borrower's property, granted until a debt is repaid, at which point the lien is discharged. And you bought cars, you bought houses. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Amen, church? It provides security interest, legal right, and collateral. So we have things such as consensual liens. Like when you sign that for your car or your house. We also have statutory liens. Like when a state or government, whether federal or otherwise, requires that a lien be placed on your property until certain outstanding taxes or other debts are paid. And there are also judgment or judicial liens that say, listen, you owe a man $100,000 and anything you have in your life that can be sold to cover it will be leaned until you pay the money or else you will lose your property. Now, it is fair to say that if I had really owned my property, titling and saying that it is Jermaine Johnson, no debts however, so no creditor to come after me, that I would decide how to treat with my possession. But once you enter into an agreement... Uh, there is a lien placed on that possession by the lender uh, that will technically make you own a borrowed goods. You can pop style all you want and I fear. Now here the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, Paul was dealing with some endemic situations there in Corinth. Corinth was a prospering church, but the people had some practices, some evil, some immoral practices that were taking over the church. And persons from the house of Chloe and others who visited with Paul and who wrote to him brought these things to Paul's attention. And high among the agenda was sexual immorality. Fathers were taking away their sons, wives and this kind of a thing. When he heard it, he wrote to them to encourage them in the Lord and to remind them that as children of God, these things must not be named among them. And as Paul developed his argument to show on what ground or authority God can tell you how to live your life, he says to them in verse 18 that you must, uh, verse 19, or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? It's my body. You can't tell me what to do with my body. Is that so? And then he continues to say, whom you have of God and you are not your own. Wow, it's as nice as you look, Sister Fullerton, a borrowed goods. As debony as you're looking, as well, borrowed goods. You are not your own. And why do I not own myself? For you were bought at a price. Come on, now, church of God. You see, if you were bought, number one, it implies that you were once owned by somebody else. You don't buy something that belongs to you. Am I talking truth? Because of sin, humanity incurred that debt that could only be settled with your death. Because of sin, humanity incurred that debt that could only be settled by your what? Death. And because that debt is eternal death and damnation and separation from God, were you to pay it, you would be no more. So when God out of his abundant love and care for his children saw the predicament of his rebellious and disobedient children, he decided to take on the cause as if he were the one who sinned. And when the time was right, the Bible says God sent his only son born of a woman under the law that he might become our righteousness. 
And so one day, some 2,000 years ago, on a hill called Calvary, Jesus set out to do a certain transaction. The debt he went to pay was the sins of the world. The same sins that when he asked for a statement to close, John said of him, Behold the Lamb of God. He takes away the sin of the world. No other man could settle the debt because his life was not valuable enough. And just like when a just when Abraham thought uh, that his son Isaac uh, was the best thing since sliced bread, uh, God said, hold on on your knife. Uh, that was just a test. Uh, not even Isaac's obedience uh, can fulfill this debt. Uh, Moses could have settled it. Uh, Samuel could have settled it. Uh, Abraham could have settled it. Uh, but when the righteous God of heaven uh, put off his garb of divinity, uh, came down into humanity, and he went to the bank of Calvary, uh, the checkbook uh, was illimitable so he had what to pay uh, for every sinner from the Adam who caused it to come into the world uh, to the children that have just been delivered this morning uh, that's why the song says uh, chief of sinners uh, though I be uh, Jesus shed uh, his blood for me uh, died uh, that I might live again uh, so when they check the documents uh, he recom they recognize at Calvary that the price was right in the carter. It was right for the adulterer, right for the murderer, right for the backbiter, right for the idolater, right for the sinner. But what exactly did Jesus do at Calvary? He did a refinancing. <laughs> Come on now. What did he do, church? He did a refinancing. For a Jesus paid the debt for us without any sorts of demands on our life, Sister Mitchell. It would mean that we are now free for all to do whatever we please with our bodies. Come on, church. But what he did instead, he refinanced our souls at Calvary. I said, we, they cannot pay the debt they owe. So let me use my vicarious death to die in their place that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, finish it church, shall be saved. So now that we've been freed from the bonds of sin, now that we've been freed from the debt that held us captive, we are still under authority. So there is a lean on us. You see, when there's a lien on a property, you cannot sell the property, nor do anything that contravenes the terms and conditions of the lien. Come on, church. So though you look good, you sound good, and you're living your life good, uh, conditions apply. Uh, see the press for details. Uh, you were bought at a price. You see, you're expensive. Look at the person beside you and touch him on their shoulder. Uh, the most expensive thing that you ever touch in your life. For silver and gold, Peter says, could not redeem us. But we were redeemed with the what? The precious blood of Jesus, brother Wallace. So listen to me now. We are not free to do as we please because God has a lean on us. It is because there's a lean on us why God can tell you how you must live your life. So when God says your body is a temple of the living God, and you decide saying you want to smoke rum and Red Bull, remember the lean. Hello, somebody. When God gives you money, I say, my child, I, I'm so in love with you. I am going to take a commission and you keep the rest for yourself. Give me a 10% for the tithe and a free will offering. I just start long up your face. Remember the lean. Whatever God tells you to come and assist me in carrying out my work of saving souls and be a true missionary for the kingdom of heaven. But you feel as if God is bothering you because every day he wants you to go for more in 2020. Remember the lean. Spurgeon says that your body was a willing horse when it was in the work of the devil. So don't make it a sluggish hat now that it draws the chariot of Christ. Whenever somebody gets on top of your last nerve and your wife, tell them a piece of your mind. And then when they look at the lean agreement, he says that let your communication be seasoned with salt. Remember the lean. 
there's a lean on you. Whatever you are tempted to do that is outside the will of God, even with the audacity of believing that I'm my own man, I'm my own big woman, nobody can tell me what to do. Excuse you, remember the lean. There's a lean on you. But there's a way for one to remove a lean from their property. The Bible says, do you not know that your body is the what? The temple of the Holy Spirit. And you are not your own, for you were what church? Bought at a price. Therefore, what must you do? Glorify God in your body. In other words, everything you use yourself to do, you must lift up God in it. When you dress up your body, they must say, laugh, you see that body there? You know what's after Jesus. Amen. Amen, get so weak. You're right to make you sound so weak. Because when you see how somebody look, I can't got property, I have a treat, so. You know, one of the things that is done whenever you have a lien on a property, like a car, is that you have to insure it. And you know why the insurance is there? Because the lien is what? Collateral. And thus, if there's a claim, you are going to process it, but the insurance is not sending you the money. The institution that has the lien on the vehicle will be paid. And if there's any overage, then bless yourself. Are we together on that? So it indicates on it that a certain prop, um, company has a lien on this vehicle. And if you want to sell it, you have to go through the lien holder. Because they are the true possessor of it. You are just keeping it in trust until you pay off that which you trusted. But if you believe that the conditions are too difficult to handle, you can always go and pay off the debt and get them to release or discharge the lien. You not get it yet? If you and I ever believe that the requirements of God are too stringent for our lives, the only option to come out of this agreement is for you to go and pay your own debt and say, give me back my title, Jesus. You get it now? Yes, man. It is because there's a lean on you. Why God can't tell you, say nothing, you're poor. Why God can't tell you, say you must not abuse your body with strong drink because it is what? Raging. It is because there's a lean on you. Why God can't tell you, say, you must adorn yourself like a true child of God. And so in order to keep a good relationship with that company that has a lien on your property, you must maintain the value of the property. So every year or two, the insurers will say, do a what? Valuation report. Because they want to ensure that you are not devaluing the asset, which is standing liability. Am I talking so to somebody here? Collateral. So you have to maintain the value of the investment that was done in your behalf. Silver and gold could not save your soul. That's why rich people did too. There's a lien on you. So when you dress up the property, we have lien. You can't expose it so. You can't put it up like Instagram style, the beach of social media. Everybody in a bikini. Because your property is lean. When you are tempted to put a little wine in the sorrel, remember the lean. <laughs> when you are tempted to shortchange people in business, remember the lean. When you are tempted to be fraudulent at a workplace because you believe you can't get away with it, remember the lean. When you are tempted to take God's body and to go boogie down, remember that there's a lean on you. Christ has paid for the sins of the world. Waiting for you to come and sign the lien document. And how do you sign it? Consensually. When you accept Christ through faith as your Lord and Savior. And say, Lord, give me your grace. You will listen to what Mark 16, 16 says. He that believeth and is what? Baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. What do you mean? If I don't like what's happening with the lien agreement, I can say, bank, please send me a statement to close. And they will sign off that. They will also charge a little fee for the transfer of lien, etc. Et and once you pay that amount, then you are out of the bondage. And you can get the document and say, fill me this. 
You can do it with Jesus. But if you do it with Jesus, you have to go pay the debt yourself. Now the reason Jesus died for humanity is that your three score and ten debt after earth cannot suffice for the demands of the law. The law requires that you die eternally after punishing for your sins. Am I talking to a church that knows the Bible? So we're not talking about any cheap grace here, sir. And thus, if you believe that God is too tight, I mean, if you come, cut me some slack, all you need to do is to say, God, take back that debt of Christ that you used to pay for me. I will pay for my own sins. May I see the hands of those who would love to pay for their own sins? I will go and send the list to Jesus later. Raise your hand. I thought so. Listen to me, brethren. And when I say brethren, I'm talking to myself too. The only way to come out of this contract is to take over the debt by paying for it yourself. Otherwise, we have to abide by the lien. But the lien that we are on is way more beneficial than the one that we were under. Because in this lane, we are the ones who get the greater benefit. Come on, church of God. What a wonderful God we serve! For us to be, if you think it's not, it's unbiblical, why do you believe that those who do not accept Christ are going to be punished in hell? It is because they never incurred a debt by accepting the price of Calvary. <laughs> so when Jesus, when, when we come into judgment, and God is going through the books and he says, Jeremy Johnson, he said, Lord of mercy, what a heap of debt this boy rock up on himself. I said, oh, oh, he refinanced it. He said, yes, Lord, sorry, here's the lien agreement. I refinanced it at Calvary, my father. <laughs> Stephanie, God be God. But if God were to come, and he's going through the books and say, John Brown, what a heap of debt this I want to incur upon himself. Lord of mercy. John Brown, have you ever sought refinancing? No, sir. Because all of them wanted me to use my property for collateral and me not give up my title. John Brown is going to suffer for his own sins. It is simple, brothers and sisters. Is either Christ pays for it or you and I pay for it. Did you get that? It's either Christ is allowed to pay for it or you and I will pay for it. There's a lien on our lives. So Paul says, your bodies are the temples of the living God. For you were bought at a price. And therefore, at the basic common level of decency at least, you must glorify God in your body. We are not free to live our lives wantonly and for the sake of sin and its pleasures because we are private property. A document is in heaven indicating that the believers belong to Jesus Christ. He has what to show for it. And might I tell you, I am glad that he does. Today I exhort myself, even as I exhort each of you, to live according to the standards of the lean that is on us. Because if you ever lean up, lean up the lean, you might end up in a problem. By the grace of God, it is my desire to glorify God in my body and in my spirit, which are God's. Because of the lean that he has paid for my soul, and I'm glad that he paid the price for me. And if that is your desire, please raise your hand. Praise the name of the Lord. Look around at those hands. You may take them down. I want to make a second call as we stand by to sing our appeal song 308. Holy thine. If you are here today and you have not yet accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, K of G, you cannot claim to have a lien on you. You are a free agent. You really own the property of your life with the consequences that come to it. With it. The soul that sins shall what? Die. And who has sinned? All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Every day then 
that a man lives without this repayment or refinancing of Christ. He is still under debt of law, which requires the what? The cessation of his life. For the wages of sin is what? Death. But the gift of God, the refinancing, is eternal life. You are here this afternoon. You are not yet a born again Seventh-day Adventist Christian. But you want to say, Pastor, I want Jesus to refinance my soul and put a lien on me so that my soul can be saved from sin and eternal damnation. Raise your hand. Is there one? I see a little hand over there. Is there another? If you're online, use those online assets, that link, that telephone number, that QR code, and indicate your interest or decision. Maybe you once walked with him, but you took back your property, relieved yourself of the lien, and went and now started to live according to your own pledge and ledger. But God is saying to you, is either Christ is allowed to pay for it, or in judgment, you are going to pay for your own sins. Is there one more who would like to say, pray for me. I want God to cover my debts, even though there is a lien involved, because I know that it's in my best interest. Raise your hand. Raise your hand right where you are. I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer to to thee, we sing it again. I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice, and it for thy love to me. But I long, but I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer draw to thee as we recommit sing with me now draw me near near blessed Lord to the cross where thou hast died is there one draw me near you want to say Lord draw me near and cover me with the precious blood of Jesus that I may be saved from my sins. You are not yet a Christian. Raise your hand to thy precious. Raise your hand where you are. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. Raise your hand where you are. Oh, the pure delight. Oh, the pure delight of a single Lord that before thy throne I spend. When I kneel in prayer and with thee, my God, I commune as friend with. Before you go to the chorus, consecrate me now. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. May my soul look up with a stand as we all stand and my will belongs to God. So draw me near a blessed Lord to the cross where thou hast Oh, draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord. Oh, to thy precious plea. I'm getting ready to pray and close. The music is playing on the same key. You want to say, come, Pastor, you want a prayer? I want to invite you to the altar. Somebody who recognizes that, listen, you're under contract with sin, and the wages of sin is death. 
but you want God to help you to allow him to refinance your life with Jesus so that you can be saved eternally come to the altar is there anybody who requires that prayer this morning this afternoon this is where you show heaven where your heart is praise the name of the Lord somebody is interested in the Lord's lean come on shake my hand don't be ashamed praise the Lord it takes courage I know but thank God when I defaulted on my loan the bank slipped up so I had things worked out in my best interest but heaven doesn't make those kind of mistakes when God comes in judgment every T will be crossed and every I will be dotted so right now you can either stay possessed of the devil or you can be repossessed by God so that he can pay for your sins and allow you to become his property with a lean on your life. Somebody say amen. The closing song. I would be their share, your holy life. Is there another? Teach me how. Leave your seat and come. Teach me how. I would do thy Help me, help. Is there somebody has come to the altar? Come on, let's sing church. Holy thy, holy thy. You're online, go ahead and click that link and fill in your information. This is my vow, holy thy, holy thy, holy thy, holy thy. Just now, what is worldly pleasure? Come on, what is worldly pleasure? Wealth or fame? We thou be, we thou be. I would leave them all, I would leave them. Is there another for thy dear name? Come on, this my will. Before we sing the next chorus, the last verse, come on now. As I catch earth's strength and joys behind, come thou near. Is there one more? Come thou near in thy presence, home. In all I find, tis my comfort here. Come on, lift your hands and give yourselves to Jesus, everybody. Holy thine, holy thine, holy thine, holy thine, this is my vow. Holy thine, hallelujah, holy thine. So draw me near, near, blessed Lord, to the cross where Thou hast died. Draw me near, near, blessed Lord. To In the stillness of the moment, even as those tuning in online, the 148 devices, no doubt include people who have not yet made Jesus their choice. Some once came and took the refinancing arrangement, but signed back out that lien to themselves when they backslided right back into sin. But the doors of mercy are still open wide. And while they remain ajar before probation closes, God is inviting you to return to him. Perhaps you've never made a surrender before. So it's not a matter of returning, but a matter of seeking him for the first time. God wants to pay the debt that you owe that you cannot pay except with your soul so that you can live the life that is his. 
And what penalties there are? Just penalties that make your lives much better by living in accordance with his commandments and his will for our lives. I thank God for those of you who boldly walk to the altar. I know that it took great courage. I'll admit that in 1999 when I walked to an altar like this and got baptized that same night, I shook in my seat and questioned whether or not I was ready to go up there. I even thought the brethren would laugh at me and mock. But instead they said amen and they affirmed me. And if you think it did nothing, yeah, am I talking to you today? God wants you. And if he had you before, he wants you back. God wants to pay the price of your sins through Jesus Christ so that you can be saved. And then he will apply the conditions. You were bought at a price. What must I do, God? Simply glorify God in your body. If that is what it takes for me to go to heaven, I'm gone. <laughs> Don't let the devil fool you. Don't let the devil ensnare you. God's lean is to straighten you up and make you into a better person. My brothers and sisters in the church, I pray today we'll all recommit our hearts to living according to the standards of the lean in taking good care of this prized possession we've received through Jesus Christ and being obedient to his will that when he comes again, he may take us into his everlasting kingdom. As a sign of affirmation in the prayer, just take the hands left and right of yourself. Take the hand to your left and to your right and just affirm that person that's next to you as we pray. Come on, take a hand, take a hand, take a hand. Take a hand. Yeah. I might as well help out here. Take a hand. Let us pray. Everlasting Father, Lord God, thank you for what heaven has done for us. Thank you for taking on a debt and standing guarantee for it by sending the Holy Spirit as a down payment to show how much you want to remain with us forever. We are forever grateful for your long suffering, your loving kindness, your grace, your mercy, your patience towards us, O oh God. We bless your name, O oh sovereign King of kings and Lord of lords. You are a wonderful Savior. You warned man about the consequences of disobedience. And he rebelled anyway. You could have washed your hands fairly and allowed our destruction. But instead, you enacted a plan of redemption. And you never stopped until you paid the redemption price to redeem Adam's fallen race. No sinners of whatever degree, under whatever decree, may come to Jesus Christ and experience a refinancing of their souls. As his precious blood is applied on behalf of the believer, thus freeing the sinner from his sins and making him a free man, only with the conditions of the lean of glorifying God with his body and spirit. We accept the conditions today, God. Those who walk to the altar are asking for your strength and courage to accept the conditions and come into this lean agreement. Those of us who have the lean on us, Sometimes we fail to maintain the property that you've invested so much in at Calvary. But Lord, forgive us today and help us to value ourselves like heaven valued us and paid for our sins and made something out of us. That we may indeed affirm that we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people whom you have called out of darkness to show forth the praises of him who has made us free. Happily, Lord, we accept the lean that is on us and the title of our lives that are in the hand of Jesus. Help us never to sign it out, nor cause you to discharge it, lest we have to pay for our own debt, which requires our souls. I pray that somebody here today 
watching online and in person, will make a formal arrangement to sign up these documents through baptism, figuratively, symbolically, sign up these documents through baptism to turn over the property of their lives to Jesus Christ. Whom to know is life eternal. Every time we are tempted to go off track as of this moment, remind us of the lean agreement and help us not to violate it, but to fulfill its requirements that you may take pleasure in us and we may indeed glorify you that we may move from this kingdom of grace when you come into your kingdom of glory. We pray and say thanks through our chief refinancer, Jesus Christ the righteous. Let the church say amen and amen. Before you go back to your seats, I just want you to know that our next baptism is next weekend. And if you really want to allow Christ to sign you up, then sign up for the Christian Jubilee. Don't stay away, my friends. God wants your heart. He wants you back. His chief desire is to save your souls. You may return to your seats. Put a smile on your face, my brethren. Put your hand across your heart. Not that you're going to say the national pledge. Come on now. Look up to heaven. And say after me. Thank God. There's a lean on me. Lord dismiss us with thy blessing. Fill our hearts with joy and peace. Let us each the love possessing triumph in redeeming grace. Oh, refresh us, oh, refresh us, traveling through this wilderness. Thanks we give and adoration for thy gospel's joyful sound. May the fruits of the salvation in our hearts and lives abound. Ever faithful, ever faithful to the truth may we be. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace in And just before we sing that chorus, just reminding you that starting this Tuesday evening at 7 p.m., we'll have our weekly virtual Bible studies. And we invite you, whether you are a member or not, to join with us. If you want the Zoom credentials, speak to a member of the church whom you know to share the information with you. And this third Tuesday, we'll begin by looking at the history of the Bible and the Holy Scriptures and how to read and understand them. So it's virtual, 7 o'clock. Grab your Bible, grab your notebook, your pen or pencil, and be comfortable at home even while we study the Word of God for an hour each Tuesday. God bless you. Looking forward to seeing you. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. 
While we walk the pilgrim's pathway, clouds will overspread the sky. But when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sign. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll see and shout the victory. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of Him in glory will the toys of life repay. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. On what to the prize before us, soon his beauty will behold. Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the streets of gold. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage. Grapes of rot are stored. He has loosed the faithful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Is sounded for the trumpet that shall never call retreat. He is sifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. Oh, be swift, my soul, answer him, be jubilant, my feet, or God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory. Glory, hallelujah, his truth is marching on. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea. With a glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. As he died to make men holy, let us live to make free while God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea. With a glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. As he died to make men holy, let us live to make men free while is marching on glory glory hallelujah glory glory hallelujah glory glory hallelujah his truth is marching on glory glory Glory, 
glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is on. Glory, 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 hallelujah, glory, glory. 